All right, my friends, my name is John. I'm a recovered alcoholic and drug addict, and it is my pleasure to talk about making it right, making it right today, because uh, this is just coming out of an injustice that I just suffered. And so I'm still not feeling well. I feel like I got spit out of the back end of a uh, cement mixer, and uh, there was an injustice served on me. And so um, whenever there's injustice, we always want to make it right. So here's here's a little story. There was uh, uh, the Super Bowl event happened uh, on Sunday. I had a couple friends over, and there was always whenever Super Bowl is there, I'm there for the football, but then for the food as well. So there was a plan for food, and the plan this year was Chinese food. It's unprecedented. Never ordered Chinese food ever on a Super Bowl. Some people said. Well, maybe we better order early. It's going to be booked and packed and we'll never get it. I'm like, okay, typically people don't order Chinese food for Super Bowl. That's like chicken wings and nachos. So I think we'll be okay. So I had this plan. We had a little appetizer. And then the, the I don't know if you caught it, but the, the halftime, the halftime show. I was not going to be interrupted for that because that halftime show was made for me and my era and generation. Of, of music lovers and so I wasn't going to get interrupted I said we're going to order food right after the the Super Bowl this is the, there was a tribute to Tupac there was Dr. Dre Eminem like it was a glorious it was a glorious musical escapade I think the younger generation kind of just rolled their eyes while all the parents were like dancing in their living rooms and it was a glorious sight. So I, I call, we order Chinese food. Obviously we order too much, the typical John Ruby ordering. And uh, we sit down and it was a, a, a glorious meal of, of crispy beef chicken and taco, or not tacos, I'm mixing up my, uh, my, my food. Uh, we had the, the egg rolls and we had everything, Singapore noodles. We had Shanghai noodles. We had sweet and sour. It, we had it all. And it was a glorious spread. And so everything went fine. Uh, one of the Super Bowl teams won the Super a, a team won the Super Bowl. Everybody went home and we all went to bed. The next day at about three o'clock, I'm in a store feeling a little faint. I, I hadn't eaten that day. And I thought maybe it's just, you know, hunger and maybe it's this mass. So I sit down um, and, and felt a little bit better. I get all my stuff. I get up to the cash. I told the guy at the cash, time out, time out, buddy. I just got to run to the bathroom. And I, I hit the bathroom and uh, was there probably too long and uh, came out. And the guy was probably wondering where I was. I'm like, hey, buddy, I'm back. I'm sorry, a little embarrassed. And I uh, got back to the shop and unloaded all the stuff. And I started feeling faint again. I was like, man, I better eat something. So I ate a little bit of orange. I uh, had two, little, uh, two, two of those little nectarines wasn't even feeling better. Um, so I decided, all right, I better pack it in. I'm not feeling so great. So I, uh, Vicky released me. We, we had a little bit of a meeting that evening, Monday evening. So I went home. I was released to go home and lie down. And on the ride home at the Blair Pass on the highway, I had to pull over and I projectile vomited all over the highway, my friends. I, I can show you where it is. It's probably frozen. I couldn't believe I did that. I shut the door and then one more time. So I, I kind of got it everywhere, all over the highway. And I was like, wow, this is intense. I got home, I had the chills. And lo and behold, Vicky comes home. Later that night, my son gets sick and we're all vying for the bathroom all night long. And, and there was wailing and gnashing of teeth like I've never seen before. It, it was a, a beautiful sight. It was so painful and violent. After we go to the bathroom, we all make, we're, we're making fun of ourselves. And it's like, okay, next, uh, I'm going to try to get some sleep. So we finally, we all get to sleep. I think the last uh, ex, ex, expellation, export, the last, the last bathroom we used was about 5 a.m. And this is Monday morning. We all took Monday off and uh, we or we all took Tuesday off and, and rested. And so I felt violated. I felt offended. I felt like somebody made a grave error in the culinary world and I needed them to make it right. And so I said, how do we make it right? How, how does the power of John in this sober living life 
you know, 15 years of recovery. How, how do I make, how do I get justice? Um, we could burn down his plate. No, that's not a good idea. We could, well, I, how about I just phone him? We'll just do that. So I, I phone, I phone the guy, asked for the owner and I just told him the story. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry that happened. It could have been this. It could have been something else. It might have been another part. You had a big party, right? It could have been uh, maybe you got a, a, a virus there. And I knew he wasn't, he wasn't taking ownership of what happened. He was not uh, making it right by any means. But at the end of the conversation, he goes, I know how to make this right, my friend. 10% off discount for your next purchase. And in my head, I said, next purchase, next purchase, eh? I didn't feel like he had made it right. And, and so this is what happened. I, I just very maturely said, thank you very much. And I opened up uh, Google, Google Business, where you can leave reviews. Because I think this day and age, everything is rated on views. Uh, how, how, you know, how many stars and how many complaints. And I was just going to write in caps, food poisoning, star, star, emoji, emoji, puke emoji, crap emoji, all the emojis that, that aren't pleasant, the middle finger emoji like 300 times. Took a deep breath and I said, I don't, this is where recovery kicked in <laughs> because if you've been through the process of recovery, um, the making it right process is a little bit farther down the line. The realization process is kind of at that point where I become willing to um, understand that I have a spiritual problem. I have hair in the drain. I'm, I'm plugged up. I, I don't have conscious contact with God. I'm not in fit spiritual condition. I say this prayer and I'm willing to do the requirements on that. And so we call this inventory. And so we do this inventory and we look at these root fears and we realize the wrongs that we've done to people because of me reacting out of my root fear. So now I can, I quickly, before I, before I posted my, my Google review, I said, have I ever poisoned anybody? I had to think about it. I'm like, I've poisoned lots of people. Um, like I poisoned them in the drug world. I've, po I've ripped them off. I've poisoned them with my thinking. I've poisoned them with name calling. Um, all, all of those things, I might have not made them violently ill, but have I poisoned their spirit? Have I, have I wounded them? Have I, have I sh shot arrows at them and, and darts at them? And, and I've, I've hurt them and wounded them. And so I said, yeah, I have. So then I went to uh, the other thought that came into my mind was, well, maybe there's other people that are going to be wounded by this. And so I decided to see what else I could do about this. So I called, uh, I looked at the Google and, and they said, you, you should call it into health and safety. So I'm not one big on to the authority train of, of by any means, but I decided that I would just send a quick email to uh, our friends at health and safety. If this is a problem that's been going on, then they could deal with it. I don't want John Ruby to deal with it. I want the authority to deal with it. It goes against my old virtues of, of snitches and all of that stuff. And, but I was violently sick and I don't want anybody else to get sick. So I sent a simple email and to which I got a phone call very quickly back. I was surprised. And next thing I'm being interrogated of what food we ate, what's my age, who else. And I had to share all the great details. So, I believe that it's in the authority hands and not my hands. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. But here's the thing is, how do I make amends? How do I make right the wrong that I've caused the world around me? And so the amend part of it is really a word called fix or modify or improve. Change for the better. So do I have that in my life? Um, when I get to this part of inventories and I see this realization of the resentments that I have and, and I've done the same thing to other people, I've poisoned other people. Um, and, and it's due to this fear that I've had in my life that has been running the show that 
you know, I, I think I'm doing the best that I can. Just like the the Chinese food place, they're they're not trying to get people sick. I, I'm sure of that. And neither was I. I was not trying to get people sick. I was not trying to hurt people. I was not trying to step on the toes of the people around us. And and so when I get to this inventory process, I see a realization that I've poisoned people, and then I can see my my actions, my activities that I did that to people. And then I can see my motivation and I can see the delusion behind that. And then I can go to the core fear. The delusion is the justification of my fear that I don't even know that's there. And so when I get called out on it, when I get confronted of it, when people bring it up, I get very defensive and I get very accusatory. And then I just say, yeah, 10%. I'll give you 10% on the next time you talk to me. <laughs> How generous I am. And so to me, that's not really amending the relationship. So I thought, what would it take for this, this food place to amend my relationship? Well, they could have given me my $100 back. They could have made me, like, I don't know what would it have done it. 10% didn't feel right. Would it be a full refund? I think that would have been nice. Maybe a full refund and a gift certificate for like another meal. I think that would have been nice. How about part owner? See, now I'm getting onto the side of like, this is too much. This is not um, changing for the better. Now I'm starting to take it in my mind because of the injustice that served to me. So if I can't see where I've done injustice in the same way, I try to get it fixed on a very different level. I try to take ownership of the store. I'm I'm like flaming arrows through Google uh, business. I I'm, I'm calling the police. I'm 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 boycotting them. I'm putting signs on their window. I'm spray painting it. Um and and so I think if I don't see where I've done mis injustice to others then when I get injustice served to me I want it to be amended at a at a huge level that doesn't even make sense so um, when I've gone through these realizations and I've seen the fears um, that that drive this justification that lead to my false thinking that leads to the behaviors that hurt people I'm poisoning people myself and so when I can see that, I'm able to make amends to the world around me, which is a beautiful thing. I can see that the fear that I've had inside of me has hurt people due to the same things that people have hurt me. And now I can go and make it right with them. So many times, I don't even know the wrongs that I've wronged people with. I, I don't even know the hurt that I've caused and the harms that have built up over the course of time because I don't even know that I'm being driven by fear because it's so diluted that I'm just doing the best that I can. And so I was reminded of a couple of places in the Bible. Um, Jesus talks about this scattering of seed. And, and there's four types of soils. And I always thought that everybody was a different type of soil. I thought, you know, maybe Josh was, you know, this type of soil and Vicky was this type of soil. And, you know, um, I was this type of soil. And the, the goal was you were either one or the other. But I, I kind of had it like in a meditation. I, I felt it differently um, this time where I was looked at the four soils. Uh, one was the, the seed and the, the seed is the truth. And, and the truth is always going to point out stuff that I'm, you know, in delusion of the the truth is always being hidden by my by my justifications and it's always the truth is going to combat my fear and so if i'm unable to receive truth then i can't see my fear and then i can't see how i'm hurting people so the goal is for my heart to be good soil here's the four soils the the truth falls on the seed falls on a footpath the birds peck it away really quickly. The truth falls on shallow ground, you know, like little ground, like there's a bit of dirt and then it's all clay or rock. And, and so the truth comes up a little bit, the plant comes up a little bit and I can face the truth, but then it withers away and I don't do anything about it. And then the truth falls among the thorns and, 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 and the truth rises up, the seeds rise up, but then they're choked out by the thorns. And I don't see 
what I need to see. And then the last soil is the fertile soil. The seeds go in and deep and then they start, they, the seed actually has to die before the, the sprouts come up. So isn't that the truth is where I really have to see this truth and die of myself before there's fruit. And so now the seeds come up and they bear the fruit. And so I truly believe that this process of recovery and going into the inventories is about changing the soil of my heart because I think that there's places of my heart that are shallow. I think that there's places of my heart that are, are full of weeds. I think there's places of my heart that are rocky ground. And the goal of recovery is to really churn up the ground and for God to do what I can't do for myself in my heart and make my heart all useful ground. And that's only if I can see the truth. And so doing the inventories is actually going to let me see the truth and let me see the harms. Because when I see the, the truth of me poisoning people and the reasons why I get at the end of it, and if you've done the inventories, you'll get to see who have I harmed in this? Who have I harmed with this fear? And you might be blown away the first time you've done this. And you're like, I had this big resentment and all of a sudden it's all about me. What the heck is this process all about? Rah! <laughs> Maybe you've had that experience. Um, there's this law, spiritual law of reaping and sowing. And Jesus says this law. And it, it, it goes in the physical world too, right? I put a seed in the ground, it dies. And then it grows and, and it absorbs nutrients and water. And then that one little corn seed produces, you know, a thousand more different uh, cobs of corn with a thousand more different um, seeds on it, kernels of corn. And so that's what happens in the spiritual world when I get the truth and, and, and the whole law of reaping and sowing is this amends part, seeing the harm, seeing the truth and making amends. So when I go to make amends, when I go to change the relationship for the better, when I go to modify the relationship, when I go to fix the relationship and improve the relationship, I'm actually using the law of reaping and sowing. So I, I'm, I'm sowing um, amends, I'm sowing forgiveness, I'm sowing love, I'm sowing peace, I'm sowing comfort, I'm sowing joy, and that's what I get back in return. And so when we look at the law of reaping and sowing, you always reap after you sow, you always reap more than you sow, and you always reap the same as you sow. Um, that's kind of the, the fundamentals around that law. Uh, the other, when we talk about the forgiveness and amends in session 16 of Life Lab, we read that story about Zacchaeus. And, and he, he has a relationship with, with Jesus and it changes his whole perspective, his whole life. He's cleaned out. He sees the truth immediately. And he goes, all the money that I stole because he was a tax collector, he was a hated man. All the money that I stole, I will pay back. But he didn't say, I'll just pay it back. I'll pay it time. I'll, I'll pay it back four times as much. That's incredible because that's monetary. All of us right now, you know, we could be like, yeah, I bothered that person. Oh, I did this. And you're like, oh, I'll just go say sorry. This isn't about saying sorry. This, there might be some living amends, which are great, but there might be some monetary amends that you have to make. And you might be like really uncomfortable right now. You might be like, yeah, maybe this isn't for me. All I'm saying is when you see the truth, your heart will come alive like Zacchaeus jumping up and down falling out of a tree, inviting people to his house, inviting Jesus to his house, the, the truth teller. And his heart was so healed inside. He saw the truth and the truth actually set him free. So don't be overwhelmed. If you haven't seen the truth yet and you know that you have stolen this and robbed this and, and, and you have so much amends to make, that don't be overwhelmed by that. In the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it reminds us every action step it says, remember, remember, you said that you would go to any length to get better, right? This isn't about feeling better. This is actually about being better. And so this is an experience that we all get to go under and go through as we've seen the truth. 
You don't do this without seeing the truth because then it's just mechanical and I'm leaving God out of it. God has to direct you now into the amends. So when we get to this part of amends, when we've done the inventories and shared them with our pace setter and gone through this whole process of, of not just looking at our actions, but looking at why our actions are the way they are, the exact nature of who I am, I poison people. Even if my intentions are good, I'm still poisoning people because of how I think, because of my principles, because of all of the things inside of me, I actually poison people. So now I go into this amends, I, I write this list, I, I, I'm able to see things that I never saw before, and now I don't need a human to tell me, I need to be directed by God because now I'm the actor and now I need the director to direct me. And so it was about a year and a half ago when I, or probably two years ago when I went through this process again, because it is secular. I think for me anyway, I think going through the, the doing an inventory every couple of years is beneficial. And you will see things that you might not have seen before. If we look at our, our, our heart as four different parts of different grounds, I want all of my heart to, to be fertile. And so I went through this inventory um, two years ago and I saw fear that I never saw before. And then in my meditation, I wounded a man um, and, and not in a, not in a malicious way, but in a way that because of this, because of, because of the fear that got brought up, it was about being exposed. I'll be exposed due to my weaknesses as a leader. So then I can be in a position of being a know-it-all. I can be in a position of like, well, I know all these answers. I'm leading a, a, a treatment center. I lead men's recovery. I do all these things and I have all the answers. And so this one man in particular, we come to this point of looking at the, the, the character defects and my, my past experiences, it, it was all behavioral. And he had so many bad behaviors that got him to where he was. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't even think about adjusting them because all we were looking at was behavioral. And this isn't about behavioral modification, but bringing up to God about these fears that cause the behaviors. So I did him an injustice and I came as a representation of God in a behavioral management way of like, you got to do something about these behaviors, which it's impossible for him to do. And that's the whole point. This, the whole point of this is to show us that we can't do this and God can. And so I, I made a call to this guy. I hadn't talked to him in a number of years and we had lunch and I was able to um, remind him of the process that we got to and where he quit. And I said, you quit because of me. You didn't quit because of the real truth of the process. I was a bad representative of God's love and God's peace and God's power. And so he quickly was like, oh man, don't even worry about it. And we had a great, he came alive spiritually because I don't think he's ever been able to talk about this kind of recovery stuff with anybody else. Um, and so it kind of rekindled the, I would say I made it right because we changed the relationship for the better. We modified it because I came as an agent of really not understanding God's love and peace like I'm supposed to because the whole process of the 12 steps is just a mirror to say that I can't do this. I don't have the power to take away these fears. I don't have the power to take away resentment. I don't have the power to take away the, the drinking problem or the drug problem or the food problem or the porn problem or fill in the blank. And now I get these fears that are really blocking me from God and I get to take them to him and he gets to take them away for me. And then now I can see the hurt that I've done to everybody. But now I have this connection with God's peace and love and joy that it's easy to make. It's fun to make amends to the world around me. So whether you've been poisoned by a Chinese food place or a subway or um, some sort of seafood or even me. I just want to apologize and hopefully that the uh, relationship can be amended some point at some time. Amen.